Hello guys, this is Ayush from Extreme Android. This will be a quick video of me showcasing my uh, Linux workflow or Linux environment, how and what I use. So I will st I will start with my distro choice. So I am using Endeavor OS BSPWM edition. Community, it's a community edition. So by the way, if you are new to Arch or GNU slash Linux in general, I recommend you to start with Manjaro KDE or XFCE versions. I will quickly show you the Manjaro website right now. Manjaro and just go to downloads. So if you're just getting started with Linux or if you want to get started with Linux, just use this XFCE Manjaro or KDE Plasma. So I recommend you to start with Manjaro KDE or XFCE versions and then you can make a switch to Endeavor OS or even uh, Pure Arch. Oh, okay, I will get back to my setup. So as I said, I'm using EOS BSPWM edition. I have configured it to my likings like the poly bar and some basic configuration changes. So I will show you it in, in a bit. First of all, I will uh, tell you why BSPWM not anything else like another window manager or desktop environment. So the actual reason is, reason is I'm new to window managers, so not really that ready to set up anything like DWM, Xmonad or something like that. They are just very complicated for a beginner uh, window manager user. So I just uh, found BSPWM really easy to configure and uh, use compared to DWM and other uh, window managers except for i3 i3 was quite easy and awesome was also very easy but i really like bspwm it's like uh, close to dwm and uh, resource usage because uh, this is actually even lighter than dwm it does not even come with a by default bar or something you have to use a poly bar or external bar and uh, also for key bindings you have to use another daemon it does not even that come with that functionality by default so uh, to be very honest uh, i was a big time distro hopper tried every de and uh, uh, desktop environment or distros and i really liked kde uh, my go-to recommendation is just manjaro kde for beginners and endeavor os kde for others so I'll start with my shell. So what shell I'm using, I'll just go into this, clear out, and we can go new fetch. So I'm using ZSH shell or ZSH shell. It's really good. I'm using oh my ZSH and power level 10K theming. It's really good. I really love it. And I'll show you my shell RC file. First thing I'm using is uh, hash hyphen D as you can see here has hyphen d pspwm and then tilde that means home directory and then config what this does is uh, it, it creates an alias for directories or folders for example uh, this is a config folder inside config folder i'm redirecting to bspwm so i don't have to write this much to uh, change my directory to this so for example i will just quickly show you example i just enter tilde bspwm and boom i got into the bspwm folder just by writing this thing and uh, it's so convenient in my opinion i will just print my working directory as you can see and i'll just go back to this so this is really useful i hope you find this a useful thing and then i have some basic aliases for example uh, I have aliases for pretty much every config that I have on my system for the BSPWM config file, for pconfig, for polybar, kconfig, uh, for sxhkdrc which is a daemon for key bindings on BSPWM, then the rofi config, a config, alacrity config. By the way, I'm using alacrity uh, terminal. This is the default setup, I think. I have not even configured it myself. This is just the default look. And it looks quite good, actually. I'll show you some cool scripts I got to know from Bugs Writer or some other YouTube videos. So I'll show you some amazing scripts. First of all, I will show you uh, ANI CLI. So I'll go back, go into the website. And yeah, so PyStar Dust. Thanks to him for this uh, amazing script. Actually, uh, what this is, you can watch NMA using this. For example, I'll just uh, open up One Punch Man. If I want to watch One Punch Man, I just have to enter that and then 
the choice, second one, and then it will ask for the episode, I will watch seven two. What it will do, it will open it up in MPV. So yes, I mean, uh, how easy that was. I just entered the uh, anime uh, name and then the episode and I am I can actually watch this as you can see. It just works really well. I love this script. And then another one I have to watch YouTube videos. I'll just quit this one. We have YTFZF. So I'll show you this too. Oh, sorry, I did it wrong. So I'll just show you this YTFZF. Where is it? Here. So this is a uh, uh, this is again a bash script to watch YouTube videos from your terminal. You don't have to open up uh, uh, the browser to watch YouTube videos. For example, I will show you the live demonstration. YTFZF, uh, YTFZF hyphen T and then you can search for any terms. For example, I'll search for Geeky Ranjit search video, Geeky Ranjit Android, search for that. And it will search uh, for the videos and you can watch it directly from here. That hyphen T I used to, uh, to be able to say this thumbnails. So I will open up some video, I will open up this one. So it will open up it in uh, MPV. As Hi guys, it just works. And getting stock. As you can see, and it will uh, MPV by default will play it in the best available quality. So that's quite good actually. So I'll just quit this. This was about YTFZF, and there is an another feature of this YTFZF. If you have YTDLP installed. YTDLP is a YTDL replacement. It's a fork of YTDL, but it is much more updated and has more unique features. So what you can do with YTFZF is, I have an alias for that. So hyphen D, you can pass uh, with T, you can pass hyphen D as well, and then search for some video. For example, I search for my own video, click enter, so for example. Uh, this is used to actually download a video. If I, I have searched for my video and I, I want to download this video, I just click enter and it will start downloading my video. So as you can see, it's, just, it's quite good. I'm, and what I have is torrent. So another cool thing I got to know from Bugs Writer. This is uh, another bash script really good one so i will show you this too uh, it's called piro kit by default and uh, it is a script from bucks writer and uh, i will show you the live demonstration uh, so i have an alias for this i just write torrent and i made few changes in the script for uh, for the website that it was using by default to scrap was actually blocked for my isp so i changed that i will link it below so you can download that script but i just want to download something for uh, from torrent i don't need to open up browser and then open up some uh, torrent search engine i don't have to go into this uh, this website and then i have to search for like uh, linux mint and then I will open it. As you can see, this has ads and this has some trackers and everything. I don't need to open that. I will just write torrent and then I will write Linux. For whatever I want to search or download, I will just write it. For example, here I'm writing torrent and passing Linux into it. I'll click enter. As you can see, it opens D menu for that. You need to have D menu for this. I will link below the git so that you can use this. And for example, I want to download this one. As you can see, I just have to search for that and then select it from the D menu, click OK, and it will start downloading. This is, uh, by the way, this is a uh, Qubit torrent. This is a torrent client I really like. The UI is quite good. I'll just stop this download. I don't want to download it right now. Just uh, quit it. Okay, I got to know this from Chris Titus Tech's video. Uh, this is a really good uh, script. This is amazing. I mean, uh, uh, this is something that made my laptop battery last even longer on Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I just watched his video and uh, gave it a try. And I was using TLP before this and PowerTop or everything and I was not actually getting that good battery life. Then I tried this one and actually I have it installed right now. And what it does is, uh, as you can see, I'm on my battery 
the laptop is not charging it is using the power save governor to set my frequency cpu frequencies to the minimum it has like the minimum my cpu frequency can go is 1600 if i do something uh, like multitasking or uh, video rendering so it will change it to performance governor or it will turn on my turbo boost so because of all this i'm getting much better battery life and the best thing about this or not only the battery life the uh, average temperature of all the cpu cores is actually below 40 for most of the time even as you can see i'm recording this uh, video using obs studio it's been already 13 minutes and uh, the cpu temperature is at 39.5 at an average so how good is that like it will be really good for your battery plus uh, you'll get better battery life and the fans actually never kick in whenever i am using this laptop uh, with this tool installed and uh, then some basic applications i'm using rofi and dmenu both i i mean it does not make sense but uh, i have both for something i'll just remove one of it uh, in the near future and uh, brave i use brave this is uh, my favorite browser and uh, what else do i use i use alacrity i already told you my favorite terminal and then i use mpv for uh, uh, media playback qubit torrent for torrent client and uh, i have word manager let me show you what manager i need to show you this uh, so uh, I have Windows 10 installed, configured in this word manager. I will quickly run it. I will go into it. Close this window. So, I'll start this. And what I want to show that uh, really interesting thing, I'll just go into uh, another workspace. I'll go File Manager. And let me show you something uh, very interesting. Uh, this is this is a benchmark that i did bare metal installation of windows 11 gives me multi score score of around 5000 and on a vm i have given it all the cores that i have that is 12 cores or uh, 12 threads so i got this score this is i mean 300 more than even a bare metal installation of windows 11 which is like amazing and i get 1400 uh, the single core score is quite a uh, little bit less not quite uh, but it's okay as you can see if i just show you as you can see, this is the windows installation i'll go full screen on this and i have office installed why have why i have this set it up already is uh, i'm still learning so whenever i got to use some application that simply is not available on linux i'll just use this as you can see if i just show you I have allotted it like uh, two core and four threads and four gigs of RAM. It is just working fine, and this is uh, quite smooth actually. Yeah. As you can see, I have opened Word, Excel, and everything. I'll just shut it down now. So that was about Word Manager. It uses KVM acceleration. That's why it's that. Uh, a uh, good in terms of performance if you are using still using virtual box just uh, move to this word manager another application i use is pdf arranger what this says i'll go full screen on this uh, no i can't go full screen on this i'll just quit one of this so this is a pdf arranger for you can uh, arrange your pdfs merge two pdfs or everything like that i'll just uh, show you import downloads sample.pdf so i can merge two pdfs it's actually better than using an online client for something like this uh, we have some private documents and everything like that you shouldn't use a online pdf merger or anything like that just use an offline client for that even if you are on windows or android just use an offline client i don't recommend using those websites they can steal your data and use it for anything they want so just don't use uh, anything else like uh, online thing and then I have a Zathura for my, I'll just quit this, just go Zathura. Zathura, I use this for, uh, this is actually very lightweight, I really like this application. Uh, Zathura, I use it for PDF viewer. And then I have SXIV for uh, image viewer. Actually, I am still learning it. I will, I will show you my config files. Just go. 
I have aliases for all my config files as you can see this is my PSP WM config file so what do we have here uh, first of all we have uh, our 10 workspaces and then we have uh, I have not uh, edited anything this is just endeavor was default and then I have edited something that is this BSPC rule add brave browser desktop is equal to 2 follow is equal to on what this will do is let me show you if I open a brave I am on my work first workspace like here as you can see this is my first workspace it will switch to the second workspace and open up brave in this and it will uh, actually change the workspace as well and follow and then I have uh, the same rule for MPV whenever I open anything in MPV it will actually open up in the 10th uh, uh, this uh, workspace and in state will be full screen so I obviously I need that immersive experience and I don't need to press F uh, for uh, going full screen it will do it automatically and also I have this for what manager if I open what manager I should just open it in the ninth workspace so that is pretty cool and then I have some auto start this is actually default of I have not configured it anything I just uh, have disabled I have uh, this kill all to I don't want to see that nm applet as I'm using the script to open nmtui uh, p config I have p config uh, this is for polybar configuration so not much into this too this is by default almost everything I've just changed the modules there were a lot of them but I just uh, I just removed most of them I just have kept the things that I actually need so this was uh, polybar config then we have k config this is for uh, SXKHD. I really don't know how to say that. Uh, yes, SXHKD. So, this is a key binding daemon for BSPWM. BSPWM does not come with its own daemon for key bindings. So, you have to use this. You can use this on any window manager actually. This is really easy. Uh, very easy actually very easy to configure like uh, super plus data and opens alacrity uh, for example this and uh, super d opens up rofi and everything like that st and uh, like that this is just a key binding i have not changed anything here actually the default configuration is quite good i just exit up i am really liking my experience on linux especially on this BSPWM uh, window manager. So uh, whenever I boot my laptop, it actually uses only 400 megs and the battery life on this uh, window manager. I'll uh, actually on uh, desktop environments, I was getting about six hours of screen on time. On this uh, window manager, so I'm getting about eight to nine hours easily. And I'm really happy with my experience. On Windows, I was getting about nine hours and uh, on the, this Linux with the, uh, this window manager, I'm getting about nine hours too. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.